Amon Reina here from Sage Investors, and I am here to do a quick mind map analysis of Tesla. Tesla, you can't go one direction these days without hearing something about Tesla. They're in the news constantly. Their CEO, Elon Musk, Musk is in this news quite a bit. We're hearing things about the company going private. Uh, so I get, I get asked questions about Tesla a lot of times, and I've never, really, I've never really analyzed the company at all and took a look at the company. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a look at it and take a quick dive into it. Um, for those of you who have followed uh, some of my previous mind map videos, uh, every time I look at a stock, uh, there's a series of questions that I always ask. There's these eight questions that I always ask myself um, every time I'm looking at a stock. And usually after I answer them, I have a pretty decent idea whether I want to buy or, or not buy the stock. So essentially, I'm just going to walk you through um, these questions and try to see. Let's just see what we can make of Tesla. So first question that we always ask is, first question I always ask uh, about any uh, stock or company that I'm analyzing is uh, what do they do? What do they sell? What is their value proposition? What makes this company unique compared to say any other company doing a similar type of business? So when it comes to Tesla, Tesla for those of you who haven't, uh, who haven't been watching the news, what do they do? Well essentially they make, uh, they make cars. They're a car. They're a car manufacturing company. So great. What's so different about Tesla compared to a GM or a Ford or a Chrysler or a BMW or whoever? Um, well, their difference is they don't make the same kind of cars as they as the other companies do. Their real value proposition is is they make electric cars. Essentially, they're they have no engine. They have a battery, and you charge the engine. You charge the battery, and that essentially runs the car. And uh, so they sell. They make exclusively electric cars. And also, what they're experimenting, also really, what they're trying to evolve into is is to be more of a, uh, is get into the whole self-driving car. Have the car drive for you. You don't have to do anything. You just sit in there and get chauffeured around, everywhere. They make essentially three different types of cars. Uh, they make what they're called the Model uh, Model S was the original. Uh, they have the Model X, which is their SUV kind of car. And then their most newest uh, line is the Model 3, which is more of a sedan, um, sedanish kind of uh, car. They've also announced plans to build a truck. I don't know if they've given it a name yet, but they are taking orders for this truck that they have not really shown anybody and really haven't built one and hasn't been demonstrated. So those are essentially the ones. So value proposition, it's they're electric cars. You don't need gas, don't need oil. And so really what they're trying to sell and what they're what they're all about is the whole concept of, of, of environmental for, and being environmentally um, friendly. By a Tesla, it shows you are you are sh projecting to the world that you care about the Earth, um, and you have you place a high priority into into uh, into environmental uh, causes. So uh, there's a certain there's a certain status element. There's a uh, there's a bit of a status element right now with owning a Tesla. Um, the fact of the matter is they don't make a lot of cars. They don't make a lot of them. So there's a certain exclusivity factor. Um, in terms of they're limited in supply, and there's a bit of a wait to get the cars, especially the Model 3. I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so that gets a certain element to sort of the cachet value for, for Tesla when you look at their cars. They, so essentially what they are is they, they have a very more luxury, you know, if you consider them, you know, where would you slot Tesla cars? I would probably slot them in terms of the luxury side of it. Um, they are expensive cars, um, <coughs> and they have a, have a a luxury-esque kind of finish. The other value proposition is, is um, in terms of the cars, as I said, they're electric cars, um, but they really, they tend to not emphasize almost the engineering concept of it. It's more of the software that uh, is unique in the sense that they it runs on software, essentially. And the unique thing about it is, is the car can be uh, upgraded um, without really adding parts to it. You can just upgrade the software and that'll enhance the car and enhance the capabilities of the car uh, in the future. So that's another kind of value proposition with, with the Tesla cars, which make it very different than the other um, mainstream cars. So that's essentially what they are. They're a car company. They make electric cars um, and make very uh, exclusive electric cars. Uh, 
So who does Tesla compete with? That's the second question I'll ask. I will ask is who are their competitors? Is this a very um, concentrated market or is there a few people doing this or are there a lot of people doing this? Is it easy to get into this business? And so, you know, their main com competitors are, you know, in North America would be the big three, which would be your Ford, Chrysler, GMs. Um, then you have, you know, your foreign cars, you have your Toyotas, your Toyota Hondas, uh, you know, your BMWs, uh, Mercedes-Benz, and your Audis are, are, their, are their players. The big thing right now with Tesla is they've, they're kind of, I guess, at the, have a leadership role. Um, they're kind of, I, w I would say they're kind of a leadership role in the whole electric vehicle side, but the fact of the matter is I think these, well, I'll talk about it when we get into risks, that uh, uh, there's a lot of, com these companies here are all, um, these companies here are definitely behind the eight ball compared to Tesla, but they are catching up. Um, so that's kind of their comp competitive round. They're competing against traditional car manufacturers. Now, who are their customers? Who would want to drive a Tesla? Who are the people that are putting money down, um, deposits down, and are willing to wait months upon months upon months to drive a Tesla? Well, as I said, they're they're. They're people who have a bit of a, in, who have an environmental conscious. They're conscious of the earth, and they want to do things that's that are that are beneficial to the earth. Um, there is a certain status element because of the uh, exclusivity factor. Um, these are people who kind of want to show that, hey, you know what, I, I'm driving a Tesla, so I am I am sort of the upper echelon of of society. Um, so it's a way for them to de to define their um, status. Uh, thing about their customers, Tesla customers are extremely loyal and are very um, def they de they defend the brand very vigorously. If you just go on any social media right now and you say anything bad about Tesla, they will just like literally swamp you and uh, and pretty much trash you. Um, they get really really uh, personal, literally about people that are slamming uh, the company. And that leads also into the CEO, um, who I haven't really talked about. And I guess that's one element when you think about Tesla is they have a, uh, a charismatic CEO who's, who's essentially become the face of, of the brand, more so than, than actually the, the cars themselves. Uh, the cars, are in some points, seem like they take a back seat to, to, the, to the CEO. Um, so yeah, back to the customers. They they're loyal to the brand. They'll defend it vigorously. Um, and one of the questions I always ask is, that's great, people buying the product, but will they come back over and over again? And I think, given the the loyalty that's shown by Tesla uh, customers, I think they would come back. And I think there is, you know, when the Model Three was released and they started taking orders for it, um, there were people that owned the Model X and the Model S who were willing to buy the Model Three. Um, and they're willing to wait, wait to get to get a Tesla. So um, very little customers, higher income. They skew more to the higher income side. Have that environmental conscious side. I guess that's sort of that early adopter maybe uh, mentality. Um, that would kind of be your makeup uh, of your of your Tesla, uh, of your Tesla customer. So. Now I also wanted to add that you know they make these cars. They're they're very highly rated, and I think that's the other thing I probably should talk about is, um, critically, they're highly rated cars. Um, some people say they're like the greatest cars that have ever been made uh, are the Teslas, and so they have a very strong, critically, they've been critically quite strong. There have been sort of one-off incidents with the cars, but most of the time, whatever I've read about Tesla is they're, they're, the cars are pretty rock solid and pretty highly rated by, by people who know more about cars than I would uh, from that side of it. So that's all f fair and good, but then ultimately, you know, as investors, we're here to make investment decisions. Hopefully, we're going to make uh, that are going to allow us to make more money out of this. So the question we always get to then, as investors, is that's great, you know, good product, strong loyal following, um, but is this company making money doing this? And so, for those of you who've been following my previous videos and follow what I do and what I teach. Sort of my go-to uh, metric for, for evaluating a company's uh, profitability or ability to create tangible wealth is, is around economic profit, which 
<coughs> excuse me, where I look where I look very closely at the company's return on capital and compare it to the company's cost of capital. And ultimately, I want to invest in businesses that generate high returns on cap on invested capital compared to the company's cost of capital. So, if you're looking at Tesla over the last three years, the returns on invested capital have ranged between uh, negative 13 to negative 5%, which is pretty bad, pretty horrible. <laughs> this is, and you compare it to the company's uh, cost capital, which is about 10%. So this company is not making any money. Um, it's creating, it's, it's got a product that's very much in demand, but they, they can't seem to be producing this product and j at a profit. So they're not making any tangible man. Like, uh, demand is strong. You know, uh, latest re uh, earnings were about, you know, increased, you know, revenues were up 36%. But the problem is they're just not making a lot of cars. Um, they're forecasting, they're at the point now where they're making 30,000 cars per quarter. <coughs> and their goal is by 2020 to make, to be doing about 500,000 per quarter. So they are very, very far off. They've been having issues in terms of the product uh, production, getting the quantities of these cars out. They've been having issues making these cars on a really mass scale compared to like what a GM does and a Ford does or a BMW does. They just don't crank out cars like the others do. And it's, it's, it's been an issue and it's really hampered their ability to be profitable. And they clearly haven't been able to demonstrate that they can do this profitably. So um, as an investor, I would pretty much stop right here um, in the sense that, you know, if you're not making money, if you're not generating tangible wealth, you're, if you're destroying shareholder wealth, then that's not a stock that I want to be behind. That's a company I don't want to be behind. I want to be behind companies that can create tangible wealth. So, so far, it seems like Tesla has not been able to do that. So normally I would stop here and I would be done with this. I would just say, no, I'm not buying the stock. But just for the sake of this exercise, I just want to keep going and just to give you some more context and more flavor in terms of how you do this type of, you know, how you think through these uh, investment decisions. So the next question I would always ask then is, after do they make money, is how strong is this company financially? What's the strength of their uh, state of their balance sheet? So when I look at a company's balance sheet, there's three components I, ten I look for. I look at the company's liquidity in terms of their cash position, their ability to um, pay um, short-term obligations on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I look at the company's debt level, what's the quantity of debt, how much debt do they have, um, and then I look at the quality of the company's assets in terms of the levels of goodwill or intangible assets uh, on that. So in terms of liquidity, when I compare their Tesla's current assets to current liabilities, the ratio comes in at less than one, which is not what I wanna see. I wanna see a company with uh, more current assets than current liabilities because that's a sign that they have enough cash to meet their short-term obligations. If you just look at their balance sheet right now, they have $35 million in cash. For, which for a company that is very capital intensive, you know, very production manufacturing oriented, that's ridiculous. That's like, you might as well be out of business. Um, they are burning through cash um, they are burning cash at a pretty high rate. And I think I'll get into that when I get into the valuations on the company. They're burning almost $4 billion um, a month, I believe, in, uh, in free cash flow, uh, which is not what we want to see. I took a look at their debt level. Uh, this is a company has a debt equity. When you look at company's debt to equity, it's two times. They have twice as much debt as they do as equity. And that's really... Um, very high. It's extremely high. Um, and when you combine that with the fact that it's got such a low cash position and a high debt equity position, um, it makes you wonder if they're going to even be able to make their interest payments. And there's a lot of talk out there about Tesla that you get, they're about six to eight months away from really basically running out of money. So their financial position right now, I would say, is pretty, pretty weak and pretty tenuous right now. So you have a company that's not profitable and has a pretty weak financial position. These are not the things that I want to see as an investor. Um, which leads us to the next question that we have to always ask when we're evaluating a company is the risks associated. What is, what's, what's out there 
that could potentially take down Tesla, that could really negatively impact the company? What's the risks associated if I were to invest with Tesla? Well, obviously, we were, we've looked at, um, there's definitely some financial risk here. Um, but there's some other things. And I think there's competitive risks too. As I said, um, right now they're ahead of the game compared to the, the other traditional car manufacturers, but uh, they're gonna have, there's nothing, there it's not like these companies are sitting there not doing anything. They're developing their own versions of electric vehicles and they're gonna have, you know, they're gonna have their own versions. And chances are, because of their ability to manufacture at a larger scale, they're probably going to be a lot more cheaper, and they're probably going to be just as just as a high quality as Tesla's. And so there's a risk that they're just they might lose market share. They right now they kind of own sort of the electric the electric vehicle market. There's a really high risk that they might just lose a lot of market share to the traditional manufacturers. Um, the other risk also is the governance side, and you know we hear a lot about that in the news. We have a CEO that seems to be kind of, you know, unfettered, um, kind of a loose cannon. Um, the whole um, private equity, the whole private, taking the company private element on Twitter, um, just not tr typical, traditional, responsible stewardship kind of uh, behavior that you want to see in the management and the leadership of your company. There's nobody questioning this guy's intelligence. I don't think he's an idiot. And he's obviously got a very um, charismatic and forward-thinking personality. And he's all about that. And But right now, it's causing problems with the governance of the business. And it's impacting the business. And it's feeding into these issues with performance, with financial positions, and it's potentially could impact the, their competitiveness um, going forward. So these are serious risks that I can see um, um, coming up that. Then, you know, you talk about, um, you know, he's, you know, this whole, you know, the short selling thing where he's just going after short sellers. Um, you know, as a CEO, you, you shouldn't really care what a bunch of people on Wall Street or Bay Street think about your stock. Just run your business. Who cares what they are? The other people will think what they want to think. Focus on the running the business. He doesn't. He seems to get um, the company, the management structure seems to get very distracted very easily about it. Um, so there are definite risks associated. It seems like there are some serious risks um, associated with Tesla. So at the end of the day. If you're still at this point interested in buying the stock, the, the last question we're always going to ask ourselves is, is the stock cheap? Is the stock currently selling at a discount compared to what it's you know, intrinsically worth? So there's two ways to really look at it. And it's kind of a little bit harder with Tesla because the fact they're not profitable. So it's hard to compare them on a, using, you know, using on a relative basis, um, using you know, price earnings, price free cash flow. But... Um, there's a couple of things that we can do in terms of comparing Tesla, and I just wanted to show you kind of a, a difference, really, um, and compare them on a couple of variables. And I'm going to compare them use Ford Motor Company as a as a for a comparison purpose to give you some perspective about where Tesla is, maybe in relation to traditional car manufacturers. If you look at the, if you compare them on based on net income, Tesla lost last year 2.7 billion. Um, and Ford last year actually made 6.8 billion in profit. In terms of free cash flow, I talked about this earlier. Tesla is burning about 3.9 billion in cash flow. Ford, on the other hand, is actually cash flow positive, and not just a little bit cash flow positive. It has got it's tr cranking at almost 9.29 billion dollars in free cash flow, and then ultimately you compare it on market cap, which is you know the market's valuation on it. You know uh, Tesla at this point is valued at about 63 billion in in total market cap, and you compare that to Ford, which is about 40 billion. So, <laughs> so this is the this is the paradox of this of this moment here you have a company that's losing money is burning through cash has a really bad financial position is losing money as i said um 
has competitive issues, has governance issues, and yet the stock market values this company more than a traditional car manufacturing company, which is profitable, which is cranking out a lot of free cash flow, and but the market values it lower compared to Tesla. So it's a very strange um, dichotomy right now um, with the company, a company that's really not performing very well, but somehow the market is valuing this company much higher than other companies, which are much more profitable and much more wealth creating. So that's just to give you a flavor of the of the of comparing Tesla on a relative basis or trying to value the company on a relative basis. It doesn't make sense. Now, if you were to compare it on a on a discounted cash flow perspective, again, a bit hard because the company's free cash flows are negative. Um, I've seen discounted cash flow analysis coming in uh, for Tesla between two hundred and three fifty. Uh, per share in terms of intrinsic value. Currently, as, as we speak, the stock is trading at about 350, what is it, 355 and change. So when you compare it on this particular basis, it looks like it's overpriced. So on a relative basis, I think it's overpriced. It appears to be overpriced. And then on a discounted cash flow basis, it appears to be overpriced. Um, now the whole wrinkle here is this whole recent bet <laughs> by the CEO to take the company private and he put out there that he would be willing to take the company private at 420 and this is with no financing even though he says financing secured it doesn't make sense so how do you you know the valuations on the stock are between 200 to 350. He's willing to offer 420. Why would you want to offer more than what it's probably worth? So, and this re again relates to this whole governance issues and the governance risks um, that are associated with it. So, clearly they're making a product that is very good. It's very highly rated. People like it. The customers. There's a lot of people that are lining up to get this stuff. It's got a. It's a strong. They make. They do. They make good cars. They clearly make good cars. The problem is they're not making them very profitably and it's bleeding, they're bleeding cash like ridiculously and it's to the point where they just may run out of cash. They've got governance issues in terms of how the company is managed. Competitive pressures, like these companies here are definitely going to come over here and seriously challenge Tesla. They're not going to be the only game in town with respect to electronic electric vehicles. And the stock is pretty much overvalued. So, but people are, are still piling into the stock so if you ask me you know there's there's you know people are buying it um you know people are buying on on emotion and people that are buying it are buying it because on you know on hope that the ceo is going to turn it around um the reality is The reality is, you know, after going through this whole exercise, and that's why I love doing this exercise, hopefully you can see that, um, like, it's really hard to see this company um, being sustainable. So from my perspective, if I were, you know, ask me would I buy Tesla stock, I would say, I would say, I would, I would say I wouldn't buy it. There's just too many... There's just too many negative things going on here, and there's just too many challenges here um, in its current state. And there doesn't seem to be anything, whether you take the company private, I don't know if that's going to make any difference, because the fact of the matter is you can take it private all you want. Um, this is still, these, the financial position of this company is still going to be pretty weak, and it's still not going to be pretty profitable. So that's, that's kind of my, what my take is. I think it's a stock I would not buy right now. I wouldn't even look at it. Great products. They, they make great cars, but don't feel good about the stock at all, and I don't feel good about the pro future prospects of it. So that's my take on Tesla. 
If you're interested, you can see some more of my mind map videos on other companies that I've analyzed, on other stocks that I've analyzed, and other stocks that I've also bought. And you can see I've essentially walked through the same exercise and uh, you can get a feel for how I go about making my investment decisions. I follow this, this format that I use, this framework that I use. I use it uh, as, as pretty much my core um, teaching uh, in my everyday investing course, which you can sign up for on my website, uh, sageinvestors.ca. You can find some more information about my courses on buying and selling stocks and ETFs. Um, and you can catch me on Twitter. My handle is at Sage Investor. I'm on there tweeting, commentating, and uh, sharing different takes and ideas and perspectives about the markets on there. So you can follow me on Twitter. So that's all I got for you today. This has been my mind map analysis of Tesla. My name again is Amin Reina from Sage Investors. And thanks again for listening in and watching. And also there's going to be a podcast version of this um, video will also be available on the website, sageinvestors.ca, as well as in Apple Podcasts. Thanks for listening and watching. Take care. Bye-bye.